Because if you use these rules today I'm sharing, you stand a far better chance of being profitable with whatever I teach or what everyone else is teaching. And you have sound money management. You stand the best chance of finding consistency and profitability. The first topic I want to touch on is impatience. I think that largely this is the, the biggest hurdle in front of every trader. When I first started talking about Forex and Baby Pips Forum, uh, one of the first things I mentioned to anyone that would be willing to listen or read what it was I was sharing is you're going to need a lot of patience. And for the old hats in here that have been with me since then, you know that's true. I said you're going to require a lot of patience. And either you're going to forge it, not fake it. You're going to forge it. You're going to create it. It's going to be made manifest in you because of putting in your due diligence of learning how to sit still. When you're not ready to do anything, you have to remain still. It's a skill set that every one of you, as a fawn, a little tiny little fledgling trader needs to learn and be comfortable being still. It's safe. It's absolutely safe. In the market, it can't bite you until you get in there. On the sidelines, the only thing that's hurting you is your pride and your ego that you didn't do something. But many times it tricks you thinking that you really knew what you were doing. But really, if you were honest, did you tell anybody in advance? Was it public knowledge that you thought it was going to do this very thing, go only this low, then go up to that very high? In that entire run, you wouldn't have any adversities or any kind of anxiety? You're lying to yourself. You're lying to yourself. And I see many people, even in my own community here, that are brand new that do that kind of stuff. You see it permeated in the industry across social media. Everybody, everybody knew it was going to do something after it happened. And when you talk like that and you really didn't believe that was happening, you didn't believe it was really in the chart, you weren't one-sided in your analysis, what you're creating is this overwhelming sense of impatience because what's going to happen is you're going to trick yourself by lying like that. That you're ready to trade. One day, something's going to happen and you're going to feel like you need to do something to change the way you feel about your life, your present circumstance. And you're going to go in there and try to press a button and the results are not going to be favorable because of impatience. The next thing is impulsiveness. If you're an impulsive person, what you're doing is you're showing signs that you have a lack of knowledge of price. What is impulsive? If you're watching price, you're among some chattering community of people on a telegram or a discord or whatnot, and you're simply waiting for something to happen in price and it starts running higher. What's everybody going to do? Oh, I'm buying. Oh, it's going up. Everybody will find their voice then and say, it's going higher. Of course it is. It's going up 30 handles. It's running. And then you feel like, I got to get on. I got to get on that. And what do you do? Buy it. Buy it. I got to buy it right now. Because it might keep going up to where? I don't fucking know, but it's going to go up. Because look what it's doing right now. That's impulsiveness. And so you're fucking laughing right now and smiling, thinking, shaking your head. This motherfucker just pegged me again. Yes, we've all been there. I've been there. But the only way you combat that and you keep it at bay and you conquer it is to learn about price delivery. That means you're not even back testing. You're just studying what price is likely to do most times. In certain instances, in certain circumstances, the market will create market reversals. It'll create continuations. It'll create range-bound opportunities. Admittedly, I can't stand trading inside of a, a, a narrow range. I can, but to me, it's too tedious. It pisses me off. 
I'll have more losing trades than I, I like to have. And I can come out of that, but I just don't like that. It's a waste of my fucking time doing that. I know I can sit on my hands and wait for the time when I know the market's going to run or offer me swings intraday where I can operate and, and do well. Get in, take mine and go home and leave it to the rest of the people to try to figure out what they're doing with it. But your impulsiveness is conquered by the study of general price action and understanding what's available in terms of how markets move. What's the benefit of that? Knowing what to do for yourself as a trader in terms of pursuing certain aspects of trading. And even if a move has already started on the daily chart and it's ran several hundred handles or whatever on a big day, you know that you're not going to be impulsive the next morning. I got to go in there and chase that. It's going to keep going down, which is the first rule I told you. On a large range day, what do we do? Lower our expectations on the morning session. That doesn't mean that the market can't run. It doesn't mean that you can't take a trade. It just means that you, as a developing student, you, as a new trader in the making, you're not there yet. Don't have a hard opinion immediately the next morning after a large range day. Wait, that's amateur hour. Everybody is going to be thinking the same thing. The, the next tenet is fear. Fear is the lack of journaled case studies. You're fearful that this isn't going to work. It's not going to work for you. It's worked for everybody else. ICT can do it. But I know as soon as I get out there and I try to do it, these assholes are going to change the algorithm. <laughs> I'm going to waste my time. I'm, I'm afraid it's not going to work for me. I have so many profitable students that had that same fear. How do you get over it? By backtesting and journaling case studies of what you are expected to do when you're trading live, what you're trying to see in price action. And that way you see how many times it works, how many times did it fail? How many times did it go into a certain measure of drawdown? How many handles did it go against you before it started moving in your favor? How long did it take from your trade entry using the worst case entry point, not the best, and then when it got to your objective, whatever some liquidity would be or inefficiency it would be trading to. Your target is always going to be the opposing inefficiency. That means a fair value gap below if you're short. You're looking for an inefficiency to target or you're looking for a low or relative equal lows. So you're looking for sell side or a buy side and balance sell side and efficiency. That's your two targets when you're shortened. How fucking hard is that? That's not complicated. Stop listening to these fucking asshats out there saying that I'm overcomplicating. They're out there waiting for a fucking random time when an indicator is supposed to say something. I know exactly what the fuck I'm doing by the fucking minute. Every single fucking trading day, I know what minute I'm going to fucking trade. I know what time my fucking targets are going to get hit. Don't fucking believe me? Bring your shit. Let's go. Bring all your fucking indicator horse shit, and I will compare and contrast and roll your ass like a fucking spliff and smoke your ass in front of everybody. Stop leaving comments in these fucking people's channels about me. Come right here, motherfuckers. Fear is easily conquered. Easily conquered. Once you go through the process of collecting the resources and case studies, where it worked in the past. And what you're doing is, is you're training your brain to see these examples. By retention, doing it over and over and over again, you're giving yourself pseudo experience, which rolls us into greed. Greed stems from the lack of trust in yourself and or your model. Wait a minute. How can that be? If you're greedy and you're saying that I'm greedy because I don't have a lack of, I have a lack of trust in myself and or my model. How can I be greedy? Because you want a lottery mindset. You think that this stuff works. Yes. But it just might be the day that you go in there and try to do it. It might cause you losing money. It may cause you losing peace of mind. It may cause you cause self-doubt. And you may blow the account. And you'll hear people out there that never show you that they make money. They'll tell you, you got to push your edge. When you're making money, you got to push your edge. Keep going in. Keep, keep, keep going. No, 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 no. I teach plateaus. What is more likely for you to succeed? 
from the bottom of a mountain slope, if it was a completely smooth 45 degree angle up to the peak of it, you're brand new. You, it's the first time you've been there. What's more likely and sustainable for you to start running at the fastest pace that you have and can do and start to run from the base of the mountain in a 45 degree slope all the way up to the top? You're at the zenith of it. You're at the, the very pinnacle at the top. You're, you're at the highest point now. Can you sustain that highest fast pace in that? Chances are no. Think about when people ride the, you know, the uncertainty roller coaster with going up the Mount Everest. Nobody goes up there in a straight shot. They go up for a little while and they level out for a little while. And they have to allow their body to do what? Get accustomed to that new height. Lower oxygen. It's a whole it's a whole process. So when you're climbing your equity curve and you're getting in, you're trying to find profitability and consistently profitable each day. In the beginning, you think I want to make this much money every single day, this percentage every single day. And when I'm winning and the market's still running, don't go back in thinking I got to get some more out of that. Your model says be done. You don't trust it. You think if you don't push, 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 push my edge, push my edge, get in there and do as much as I possibly can because the market's really running, you're losing sight. And you're pushing your entire career into one trading day. That's greed. That's the only reason why that happens. Greed. You think that you're going to make so much more and that one moment in time, you're thinking to yourself, this is the one that puts me over. You're fucking trading with nano lots. You're trading with micro lots. You're trading with one mini. Your life isn't changing. Okay. You're not retiring. You'll still see Carl tomorrow. Don't let this stuff mess with your head thinking that you have to do something over leverage, over trading, doing more than what's necessary. Your model says take the trade when it gets to your target, be done, be content, close the charts, and then refer back to it at a later time when you wouldn't be trading it. If you can't do that, you don't trust yourself. And if you're thinking that way, you shouldn't trust yourself. You have to physically remove yourself from the markets. Leave. Don't be around. Don't have the app on your chart. I'm, I'm sorry, on your phone. Don't do it. Or you don't trust your model. People are greedy because they think that their model is only working right then and there. So let's maximize it because it might not work in the future. It might stop working. I might not be able to find the same fucking setup that repeats every fucking day, every single week. I might get amnesia and forget that this shit doesn't fucking actually occur every single fucking day. Sounds silly when it's said like that, but that's exactly what you're doing. You're forgetting the fact that this stuff repeats. You're forgetting the fact that these things occur at a specific time of the day, specific days of the fucking week. All these things are repeating phenomenon. They're not random. These are, these are things that absolutely are coded. They're there because they're supposed to be there. They are set on a schedule. They're going to fucking happen. It doesn't matter how many fucking people are buying it or selling it on Reddit. They're not going to make the market do any fucking thing. Your buddy, your friend, your coworker, your relative that says, hey, I want to do what you're doing once you find consistently profitable trading. And they'll have these thing, same things that they have to work through. And generally, they're in this order. Impatience, impulsiveness, fear, greed.